Evening everybody, Rod back again. I'm going to attempt to make a video here. I got interrupted a couple of times, phone calls and random uh, people in the background. So anyway, without uh, wasting too much time, I picked up a shotgun back in October, November uh, for waterfowling, uh, side by side 12 gauge, which I've always wanted to have one uh, that was capable of shooting steel shot and shooting three inch magnum shells without having to worry about pressure signs or too much, uh, you know, too much on the old gun and uh, hard on the old barrels and whatnot. So I was on gun post. Gentleman had this gun advertised. He was accepting trades. I offered him a uh, percussion shotgun I had here made by Peter Zoli of Italy. You know, they retail for some pretty decent dollars. You know, it was in great condition, worked fine. So he told me that he would be willing to accept the trade uh, on his shotgun that he, you know, wanted to get into something different. So I said, yeah, so do I. I'd like to shoot uh, ducks with a side-by-side. -side. So anyway, to my knowledge, this gun was in working order and everything was all hunky-dory with it. Well, I'm not quite sure if the owner knew or not knew, but uh, today I found out that it only works on one barrel. And that's rather unfortunate because I am saying the gun back to the gentleman. The gentleman is refunding me. We've kind of hashed out a deal. And that's great. That's, you know, uh, I wanted to prove to him that I wasn't just trying to yank his chain or anything like that. That I actually had an issue with the gun. So I even have the, the cartridges today that I tried in it to prove that it was only shooting one barrel. And uh, so on and so forth. So let's get on with it. Uh, this is my Churchill. Or was my Churchill. Uh, 512 gold, you see these advertised online, various Canadian outlets, they retail for around $1,190, so add your tax on there, 15% to the government, then you're looking at about $1,300 and change, and then your shipping costs, so you're about $1,350 in the hole, and to get this gun here with the nice choke tubes, look at that, beautiful choke tubes, so it comes with five chokes, skeet, improved cylinder, Modified, improved, modified, and full. So you get a combination of whatever you want to put in there to shoot your birds. Uh, but this gun has one trigger right here. And it works in the sense it fires right barrel first, left barrel second. It's just two back-to-back -back pulls. There's no selector. So it also doesn't have an automatic safety. It's a manually operated safety. Now here's an issue. Okay, there my safety's on. And I will show you. Okay, we're going to cock the gun because I'm going to have to show you what happened to it. It's empty. It's safe. So, I'm going to close her. So, this gun goes to the field today. Now, I'm going to show you something here. You watch on the top of the receiver. That is not good when you're pulling the trigger and the safety is jumping up and down. That's the first thing. So, now we're going to... We're going to pull the first trigger. Right barrel, bang, went off. And there it jumped and it skipped. Now when it did that, it still didn't set off the cartridge. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little tiny divot in the middle of that shell. Well, that one didn't go off. But this one did. That was the right barrel. No problem. So we're going to try this again because... I'm going to pull the trigger. There. It won't engage the second trigger. The second hammer. You can pull that on. Look at, the, look at this. So, there's some mechanical issues with this gun. So, the gentleman is going to take it back. He's going to try and get it um, repaired, I guess, through warranty. There's supposedly a five-year warranty of these to the original owner. So I'm assuming he's the original owner, and if not, well, he can try. But anyway, I'm just going to go through a few little things of what these guns are built like underneath. So let's remove the end here. I'm going to put this down. And you know, what you have, just your typical, like, pressure fit uh, latch right there. The workmanship's not terrible on it. They say the barrel channels are pretty well done. The wood's got some checkering there. 
It's machine press checkering. It's not hand cut. But you expect that from a gun of its price point. And there's your foreign release there. Your like purdy style release that you, you know. So. And that's just for your, um, to set your caulking levers back there. That pushes against those. So, I mean, all in all, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nicely finished piece there. The wood finish is nice. The fit's not terrible. But it's the, it's the mechanicals inside that are questionable. So, let's have a look at, uh, we'll take the barrels off here. So, what do we have here? We have a locking underbite right here. And that is the only lock that holds the gun closed. We flip her upside down. There's no proof marks on the Turkish shotguns. And this is where your caulking levers would slide up in here. And your foreign would meet here and would uh, operate the mechanism. Now here's your extractor. It's not an ejector gun. It's just regular old extractors. You see there that barrel nice and clean. There was no firing. And that's the one that was fired right there. So... Um, overall, like the metal finish is nice. You know, the soldering job on this thing is fairly nice. They're put together pretty well, I have to say. But I think the major flaw with them is the internals. And I think they need some uh, refinement. And I think once they get through that, they will be just fine. So there are the... The rib end is nice and finished there. I'm sorry, I can't really focus in there. I'm having some trouble with the lighting. But there you go. So, nice polished bluing, nice metal work, nice finish work. So, so far they've made this thing look pretty. So, now we're going to move on to the receiver piece here. And as you can see here, pretty darn basic in there. There's your caulking levers way down the bottom, going through the center. And there's your, right here, you see in the bottom, that has the bite plate to hold it closed. Your knuckle pin. And there's the set for your caulking levers right there. So, or for your, sorry, that pushes the extractor to open and close your extractor. So, as you can see, you open up here, you see the bite moving back and forth. And that engages to keep the gun closed. So, we're going to put her back together. Nice and tight. Like I said, the gun has not seen a lot of use. So here's one other little irk, quirk that I have with this gun. We're going to snap the forend on. It's on. It rattles. And there's no adjustment. So clearly, there's quality control issues and or mechanical failures that are eminent with these guns. Would I recommend one of these to a prospective shooter that wants a side-by-side -side, um, for that kind of price point? Not really. Um, I would actually recommend if you had a nice side-by-side -side that you had home, like an older one, take it to a skilled gunsmith and have the barrels reamed, which a lot of guys do. They'll take the full chokes, ream them out to two modifieds or a modified and improved, and then they can be safe for steel. Uh, given that their barrel wall thickness is still there, because that's another thing you want to make sure with older guns is you don't have thin walls. It, it can be a bad thing. Um, or you can have choke tubes installed, but it's probably just better to do the reaming thing, in my opinion, because of the costs. I think a gunsmith wanted to charge me for my JP Sauer um, to do uh, each barrel was $150 just to tap it and chase the threads and get the choke tubes uh, fitted and whatnot, and then I had to buy the choke tubes myself. So that turns into an expensive process. You're talking $80 each for nice choke tubes, and then you're going to pay $150 each barrel. So there's $300, add your tax, uh, there's $360, and then you got your choke tubes, there's another $160, that's $520. And you know what? You still got your old double, and you just had to dump 500 and something dollars into it to make it compatible to shoot steel to hunt birds with. With the new waterfowl laws uh, with steel shot or non-toxic shot. Now there is a way around it. You can shoot bismuth or shoot tungsten. But 
again, the other cost is the cost of the shot. And if you can't find loaded ammo anywhere, it's like from uh, Kent Cartridge or Boss Cartridge or Polywater or RST or any of these companies up here in Canada especially, you just don't walk into a gun store and see Bismuth shot very often. They used to. And then when it, the cost started getting up, it was like they would order it in for somebody if they wanted it. But they had lots of steel. So if this was a fixed full choke on each barrel, this would not be a, a steel choke or a steel shotgun. But the thing that makes this thing good, it's got the choke tubes. And it makes it very appealing to somebody that wants to get into waterfowling with a nice nostalgic double barrel. Because, I mean, there's nothing like getting up there to, to the sky and pointing at them with a double barrel. I mean, it's just vintage, right? It's got a nice... Uh, classic vibe to it and you know a lot of people like that myself included but when you take 1200 bucks dump it into this and this is what you get well now the other part is where do you get warranty where do you get parts where do you get anything you gotta send your gun away to this place in ontario uh, gravel agencies and once it goes there they distribute it to a repair place of their choice so your gun could be sitting in a shop for two or three or four months waiting for a little part. So it's not really, um, it's not really uh, cost effective in a way if this is going to be a problem all, all the time. This could be isolated. Maybe there's a, a thousand of these things out there didn't have the problem. But this one did and that's what matters because it was like money invested. And money is not easy to come by these days with the economy the way it is. And I'm sure you could get yourself a beautiful semi-automatic or a beautiful pump gun for less than what this costs. And you wouldn't have the headaches. Um, but like I said, I think if they can refine their mechanics and spruce up their quality control just a little bit, they might have something. Uh, personally, I think these should have the double triggers regardless. I think this big cheesy... Uh, trigger guard looks kind of fake. It doesn't look real. It looks like a Nerf gun almost here, but this shouldn't be this big, or there should be another trigger in here taking up the space. Uh, this pistol grip is a bit wonky to me. Um, I think stock design could use a little bit of work, but uh, that's the way they make them. So, uh, beaver tail four ends were never my favorite, but in this case, it looks the part. It looks nice. It looks vintage, but but you can, I mean, that's, that's a little much and that's snapped on there. I mean, it snaps on easy, just push it on and there's no way of adjusting the screws. They just turn in so much and that's it. There's no adjustment on the latch. And, uh, I don't think it's my place to start beating on it and trying to tap and wedge things in place and fit this it shouldn't have to be you paid for that that should be all be addressed at the factory when this gun came out it shouldn't have had this gun should not have passed quality control uh, in my opinion so uh, hopefully the gentleman can get some of his uh, investment back uh, he was good enough like I said to me to uh, reimburse me my investment into the gun and we'll go from there so I just uh, thought I would say I thought I would say uh, this is uh, $1,200 of poor investment in my mind. So if you're going to buy one of these, uh, I would make sure I check this first. You know, you're in the gun shop. I mean, it's it's just not there. Like, it's not... It's, I make sure the safety's working correctly. Make sure your trigger is setting back on itself. Because what happened today when I shot it, after the first shell recoiled back, the trigger fell on itself. Like inside this, it fell off the sear. So there was nothing there at all. Like the trigger was almost stuck against your trigger guard. And you can't push it forward to reset it. You have to open the gun and recock it. And all this time, when I pulled the other shell out, it had an indentation there. I mean, that could have went off, you know. But I waited a good long time. I waited a good, you know, a minute to give it that time in case there was like a slow burn or something bad or whatever. And I took the shell out. But those things shouldn't be happening. These guns should be made a little more, um, a little more um, in tune of what a side by side should, and a, a classic side by side should look like. That this here is is wrong. Is too much. Um, 
I'm not sure if they make using a straight grip, but I think they'd be better. And like I said, you can make it pretty, but in making it pretty, you got to make it shoot. And this here does not shoot. So I would not recommend this to anybody else to invest money in unless you do your homework first. So lesson learned, I guess. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And I know some people are going to say, oh, well, I got Turkish shotguns. You're not wrong with them. You're bashing them. Well, no, I'm bashing this one. Uh, this one here is not good. So uh, I don't know what the other ones are like, but I'm bashing this one. Would I buy another one? Absolutely not. That's my choice, my opinion. I'm entitled to it. So that's my take on it. Um, I would rather either buy a pump gun, a semi, or maybe even over and under uh, with choke tubes and uh, and go from there. There's much more selection. But I thought maybe I was getting away lucky with this side-by-side -side modern looking choke tubes good for steel somewhat affordable it's on the high end of what i don't want to spend but you got no choice because the market's small so hopefully um this helps out and uh i'll see if i can get this uploaded and we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching like and subscribe